Jalen Duren has been having a great second season in the NBA. One of the few bright spots on a mostly memorable, for all the wrong reasons, Pistons team. And he's been playing his best basketball as of recent. Over his last 7 games, he's averaging 16.4 points per game, 14.7 rebounds per game, and 2.9 assists per game on a 70.1 field goal percentage and a 73.92 shooting percentage, and the Pistons have won 3 games during this stretch. While Durham may not have the perimeter upside of guys like Wemby, Chad, or Apollo, he still has monster upside in his own right. And it's more proof that basketball isn't just evolving as a whole. The archetypes within basketball are evolving as well. But quickly before we go any further, if you're new and like basketball, I would really appreciate if you would like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell I'm notified whenever I release a video. I make videos about basketball all the time, and liking and subscribing are the two best ways can help me out the YouTube algorithm, help support the channel, and help me reach my goal of 10,000 subscribers by the end of the season. Let's try and get 100 likes on this video so YouTube will recommend it to others. Anyways, let's talk about Jalen Duran. Jalen Duran has monster physical tools. Among the young players that are playing at the 4 or the 5 spot in the NBA, he's the most physically developed outside of maybe Paulo Pancaro. He's 6'10", 250 pounds. And while he may not be the 7 foot plus you see with other bigs, he makes up for it with a 7'5 wingspan. Most NBA players don't even reach what Jalen Duran is physically at their peak. And mind you, Duran is only 20 years old. He's super physical, which is evident in basically all aspects of his game. He's a good vertical athlete. He's a good player in terms of straight line speed. He's pretty fluid in terms of lateral movement, especially at his size. He was made in a lab to be a big man. At every stage, he's been stronger than his peers, high school, college, and even the NBA, which is something that's always been impressive considering he's also been one of the youngest players for his group of peers at every stage of his basketball career. Duran does most of his work on the interior as a scorer. He's shooting 71.5% at the rim on 7.9 attempts per game, putting him in 91st percentile in terms of efficiency and 98th percentile in terms of volume at the rim. He's a great play finisher, 68.5% of his production at the rim is assisted on, he's a great lob threat, He's a great dump off guy in the dunk through spot, he can run the floor in transition, he can get a putt back, and he also flashes some post ability with his back to the basket as well, although I do think that's still a work in progress for him, a lot of it is him just overpowering his defender, and that can get a bit out of control at times. He has great hands, which is a big part of why he's such a great play finisher and I think having good hands is an underrated aspect of being a big man. He also has touch around the basket, he can overpower most defenders with his physicality. What may feel like a bit of a throwback to a more bully ball era especially compared to modern day bigs that are working more on the perimeter it's clearly effective as he's producing monster results, with production and efficiency to back it up. However, Duran isn't just a physical paint scorer. He's also someone with legit playmaking intangibles. While the numbers may not fully reflect it, he's really advanced in this area. He has great vision when reading the floor, he makes really good reads, his feel for the game is really high. He has an ability to manipulate wall of DHOs, which I think is very underrated. And the ability to make clean dribble handoffs is just something I feel like doesn't get talked about enough. Not all players are good at it. He reads the floor wall when running the rim and rolling to the basket. He's not Nikola Jokic, Demonis Sabonis, or Ben Adebayo in terms of playmaking. Just because I think those guys are a bit better on the ball. But I would still rank Duran among the better playmaking bigs in the NBA right now. He has a functional handle, he can fit passes into tight windows, he can make a few advanced reads, even if it's not something I would say is a strength of his game. I also think that the ability to make the basic reads consistently is very valuable as well. The way I would put it is while most modern bigs complement traditional big skills with perimeter scoring tools, Duran complements his traditional big skills by being a playmaker. I think he should be utilized more in this area because I think he could be a 5 plus assist per game guy if utilized properly. 
In nine games where he has at least four assists this season, he's averaging 4.1 assists per game with a 2.1 assist to turnover ratio. That may not feel like an outstanding number, but we usually associate assist to turnover ratio for guards, and that wouldn't be outstanding if he was a guard but I think it's actually pretty impressive for a big in his second NBA season. Now, Duran hasn't shown a ton of perimeter upside. He only attempts 1.8 shots per game outside of at the rim this season, and it's a reason why I'm not as high on his ceiling as some of his other young big peers, even if I think he has a ton of upside. However, I don't think he's a lost cause in this area. He has decent touch around the basket, his form is pretty mechanically sound, there's nothing I see that's really wrong with it, and he's gotten better as a free throw shooter. He's shooting 74.2% at the line this season, which is a 13.1% increase from his rookie season on similar volume, which I think we've seen enough of a sample to believe that he legitimately has gotten better as a free throw shooter. I don't see Dern ever becoming a stretch bag or even a big time mid-range suitor like a prime Lamarcus Aldridge, but the indicators for growth are there. And I do think it's reasonable to be optimistic that he can develop a solid mid-range game as a pick and pop guy. I don't know if he'll ever reach the point where he's a major threat, but I do see it reaching a point where it's enough of a compliment to everything else he does. Where Durin is best right now is as a rebounder, because he's not just good for a young big in this regard. He's one of the best rebounders in the NBA. He's averaging 12 per game, which ranks 5th in the NBA. His 8.6 defensive rebounds and 3.4 offensive rebounds are respectively both in the 98th percentile. He uses his physicality on both sides of the glass, which has proven to overwhelm most NBA teams. He has an incredible motor, which combined with great feel and positioning on top of great physical intangibles, makes him a menace on the glass. He creates extra possessions for his team, and he's able to start a fast break due to his vision that allows him to quickly throw an outlet pass or bring the ball to the court himself with his functional handle. This is based on the fact he's already one of the best rebounders in the NBA as a 20-year-old second-year player, it's realistic to believe he can be the best rebounder in the NBA as early as next season. He has the physical tools you just can't teach, combined with the intangibles to capitalize on those gifts to reach his full potential as a rebounder. Offensively, Duran has really good upside. Defensively, Duran has the upside to be one of the best in the NBA. His block per game numbers don't stand out the most because he averages less than one per game, per that is his minutes played, I will say that, but when you watch him play, you see the upside. He's still a work in progress, he's not perfect on defense, he does have typical mistakes on tape that a lot of young defensive players make, needs to cut down on the fouls, but you also see the tools to be a truly special defender. On top of the fact, the Pistons are noticeably better on tape when he's on the court defensively than when he's off the court. The mobility to handle multiple defensive coverages. He can drop, he can hedge, he can hold his own on a sweat. The tools to protect the basket in both help side and point of attack. The wingspan to cover a lot of ground in the half court. The physicality to overwhelm opposing defenses. The motor to be engaged all the time on that end of the floor. But what stands out the most to me is his feel for the game. He's one of the smartest young defensive players I've ever seen. His ability to read coverages is incredible. His defensive communication skills as a leader when he does read those coverages is well beyond his years. Again, he's not perfect by any means. The numbers don't stand out the most. But you look at all the tools physically he has, combined with all the tools mentally he has on defense, and you see the potential for a monster defensive anchor. And he has the motive to not only get better, but also reach heights defensively that will have him among the best in the NBA. I wouldn't put Jalen Duran in the same tier as guys like Wemby, Paulo, or Chet in terms of upside. Those guys are just more versatile in terms of perimeter upside in my opinion. But I do think it's fair to say that Duran has legit star upside. He's already pretty good right now. One of the few good players on this Pistons team. 
Right now, he's a highly efficient paint scorer that's productive, one of the best rebounders in the NBA, a good playmaker for his position, and at the very least an impactful defender. I think at his best, Duran can be a 20 point per game, 13 plus rebound per game, 4 plus assists per game player with all defense ability, and that's a player in the right situation can make multiple all-star teams. But if he improves on his mid-range flashes, I think he could get to even around 23 points per game. He's made progress as a free throw shooter to at least have hope he can grow as a mid-range shooter. Duran kind of breaks all the rules for modern NBA basketball. He goes against modern big standards. He's not handling the basketball like a guard, even if his handle is pretty solid. He's not pulling up from deep from beyond the arc. But that doesn't mean he can't be a star either. I have a hard time limiting the ceiling on a second year big man with his physical tools in terms of wingspan and physicality, his feel for the game on both ends of the floor, his level of production and efficiency, who's already one of the best in the NBA at a key skill, while also being closer in age if not younger than most of the players drafted a year after he was then he is an age to those that were drafted in the same class as him. The Pistons have been a disaster this season. They've been the talking point for all the wrong reasons. But it's not like there isn't hope. Alongside guys like Cade, Ivy, Asar, and Sasser when they let those two play, there is hope. You can't spend an 8-43 record. It's a disaster. But you can be optimistic about your second year big man that is already one of the best rebounders in the NBA with feel for the game and intangibles to be one of the best players at his position as early as next season if he's not there already. But that's the end of this video if you made it to this point. Thank you so much again. Haven't already? Like, subscribe, hit notification bell, I'm notified whenever I release a video. I'm making videos about basketball all the time. And liking and subscribing are the two best ways can help me out in the YouTube algorithm, help support the channel, and help me reach my goal of 10,000 subscribers by the end of the season. Let's try and get 100 likes on this video so YouTube will recommend it to others. I'd love to hear your thoughts about Jalen Duran. How good do you think he is now? Where does he rank among bigs in the NBA? How good do you think he can be? Do you think the Pistons can turn this thing around? Not this season, but in the seasons following it. Go through all of that down below in the comment section. Also, thank you to everyone who showed up to my trade deadline stream. We went for five hours. I had a lot of fun talking with you guys in the comment section. And in really just getting out of my cell, showing a bit more of my personality while we watched a very dull trade deadline. But I had a lot of fun. Plan on streaming more in the future. But with that being said, have a nice day. And I'll see you guys in the next one.